Hi guys, Natasha with the Day of the Ethel vlog. All right, my dear friend and author, H.J. Bellis, said you need to read this book because she knows I love angst, I love, I love the suspense, and I love really deep, dark emotions. So I downloaded this book, sat down, and I literally had snot sob. Like it was so emotional and beautiful and healing and then emotional and beautiful and healing. This is Heartbreak Warfare. And I have never read anything from Heather um, Oregon, and I do apologize for saying your name wrong if I did. And I have read Kate Stewart before. So this was kind of fun. I read an author that I haven't read before, but then I also read something that I do enjoy Kate's work. This story of Briggs, Gavin, and Katie is one of, it's cathartic, because Katie says it all. She is two different women as a soldier. And she says, I'm two different women living in two separate worlds in love with two different soldiers. And it is true. Kevin and Katie's marriage is what you you read about military romance. These two met on, you know, they met, they fell in love and they had a child and they had everything. And then she has, she is deployed, but their love is strong. And it's this huge, beautiful bond that they have. But then war happens and things happen in that marriage and that trust and that bond, it cracks. It's still there, but there's cracks and you don't know what that person goes to when they go to war and what they see. But then to be, you know, taken at war and lived in fear and deal with the most grueling thing of your life. And what do you do? You are there with somebody that is your soft place, that person that you've connected with because you experience the same thing. Briggs is that beautiful soldier that you see on posters that you're like, ooh, I wanna fall in love with a guy like him because he is sexy, suave, debonair. He is the guy that makes you laugh at his inappropriate jokes, but he's also the guy that you swoon over the way he gets to your level and he gets deep into your soul and you fall in love. He is the other soldier. He's the soldier that experienced the pain, experienced the horror, and experienced war. But over time, Katie doesn't know what to do. She has these two different lives in her mind she's dealing with. She is dealing with PTSD. She's dealing with coming back and dealing with what she thinks is in her mind how she should deal with it. Where Briggs didn't really move on, he dealt with his emotions in a different way. He's not holding the war as a hostage in his mind. He dealt with it. Katie is holding it in her mind and she's still struggling to deal with it. She's still struggling to put one foot forward to find out if it's Gavin or if it's Briggs that she needs to be with. And throughout the story, you're rooting for both. You're rooting for Gavin, who is the husband, who is a soldier, who understands it. You know, not completely, but he gets that she needs to deal with her emotions at her time. And he doesn't want to force the issue. But at those times, the little boy Noah kind of just brings you to your feet because you see what this does to him. And he says it several times. He's like, just be good for mommy. We want mommy happy. And you, you break and you see that it's another fracture to this foundation. But then you see her heal in different parts of it. You see she, she laughs and she takes that run with that motorcycle. And she learns that she needs to, you know, feel those cracks up. And then there's times that you just, you root for Briggs. You see that his, his carefree attitude at times is what she needs. You know, he said it in one time in the book, he said this to her when they were discussing it. He goes, um, he goes, baby, if you were words on a page, you'd want to be what they call fine print. And you know, she is, you know, she is a beautiful when she walks in and her beautiful blonde hair and the way she carries herself. But sometimes she can be extremely snarky, but I like it because that gives her confidence. That gives her her gumption that she can do so much with it. And in those times, 
you miss that. You see that she lost that. And it's the only way for her to heal is to go through these emotions. Yeah, she does some things that you just want to shake a stick at, but then you fall for her because Katie is healing at her own pace. It may be not the pace that we think she needs to be at, but she does it. And you just, your heart heals for her. And ultimately in the fat, in the end, you know, it says run far and fast, dance that sexy dance, have that second baby, smile, Scotty, light, lighten up, tell jokes, live a long, happy life for me. And that's ultimately Gavin and Briggs both feel that same way for her. And it's when she chooses the guy for her, you know it's the most healing feeling in the world. And that's what this whole story was about. It kind of kept me in a cluster. And, um, and I texted my dear author friend multiple times as I was sobbing. Luckily, nobody was home because I want to explain to them that I really did read Heartbreak Warfare because your heart broke and it's warfare because you don't know which side you want to root for because every side is perfect and beautiful and the right person. But ultimately, the end is the right person, and it is the perfect ending. Guys, I am now a huge Heather Oregon fan, and I love Kate Stewart anyway. So guys, get this story. It is in KU, so it's well worth a read if you have. If not, get the audio, because the audio and the emotions, it's not crying. It's worth it. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.